In today's video, I take on the first room challenge for all of the Call of Duty World at War Zombies maps. Drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're not already. Enough chit chat. Welcome to the first Call of Duty Zombies game and the last game that we'll be doing in this series of first rooms. Knocked Durantoten, for some, is the first Zombies map that they ever got to play and part of that is because it originally was the single first Zombies map. A mode that originally wasn't even supposed to exist but became a side project for some passionate developers and then ultimately evolved into one of Activision's largest money makers, especially kind of in the Black Ops 3 era. But for some people, Zombies is the reason that they even purchase a new installment of the Call of Duty series. It definitely has been for me in the past, but there is just something about the era of zombies that we used to have. The atmosphere was so thick, it was so scary. We inevitably lost that as years went on, and that is perfectly fine. Or fine for some, including me. Uh, a lot of people are very disappointed that zombies is no longer kind of the horror mode it used to be. I absolutely love Black Ops 3 Zombies. It's probably... No, I think it definitely is my favorite Call of Duty Zombies installment. But there's not a lot of horror elements that are really there. For me, the peak horror was surprisingly Black Ops 2. As much as I dislike Transit and Die Rise and, you know, that kind of beginning era of Black Ops 2 Zombies, it actually is some of the scariest we've ever seen in the entire series. However, these four maps in Call of Duty World at War, Nocturne on Toten, Verrucht, Shinonuma, and Doris are easily, you know, some of the scariest in the entire series besides those beginning Black Ops 2 maps. Now that I'm done giving you a small history lesson, I'm frustrated because I actually already recorded this. I did it live, and unfortunately, I guess because I was simultaneously live streaming and recording, the file became corrupt. And so this here was the only salvageable piece. It's also weird because I'm playing on keyboard and mouse as opposed to my normal controller because I normally play keyboard and mouse for like, mul ah! I was talking about how I play zombies and then I die. Pretty funny, but obviously not enough for a video. Maybe a YouTube short, but I can't even be bothered. I'm just so frustrated with the whole experience. I'll chuck a little grenade down there. Ooh, that'll help us out a little bit. I'm also looking at this and I kind of widened into my field of view in the settings. You can input a custom field of view number. And honestly, I think this might be a little bit too wide, but uh, I'm kind of thinking it's hilarious. I want to keep it. But I'll tell you what, there are rumors of zombies potentially coming to Modern Warfare 2, which by the way, I'm really, really enjoying. Perhaps zombies maps as like potentially a year two content pack or something like that. But there are rumors, I guess, of it not being a standalone game, but rather almost being like a year two for Modern Warfare 2. And there obviously were leaks of a zombies buttons in the menus. It's hard to say if that's stuff that was potentially left over from like them just porting over some code or something like that. But I find it very odd that this being the first game on this brand new engine, them leaving stuff in the game like that. Unless there were zombies in development for the game and then obviously either wasn't finished in time for launch or they fully anticipate to just have zombies for the year two content. I mean, it's really hard to say. But either way, I am absolutely here for for any type of zombies mode. Now, ones have passed specifically like Infinite Warfare Zombies, Advanced Warfare, World Out 2, you know, stuff like that. Not a huge fan. Like even the Treyarch stuff, excluding Vanguard, like Black Ops 4 and Cold War is really fun, decent zombies modes. But anything non-Treyarch, I've never been a huge fan of. Like that first map in World War II was actually like kind of decent. It was a lot of fun. I even made a video on me playing it for the very first time and I did have a fun time. But the issue is that I did go and like briefly experience some of the DLC maps. And I have to say on first experience, I had so little fun, I didn't even want to make content about it. I have played briefly Zombies in Spaceland from Infinite Warfare. I've also just realized that we're doing pretty decent right now, like round five. I'll tell you what, when I did this live and had the recording, I definitely, I don't even remember what round I got to, but it definitely wasn't this high. Or maybe it was, I can't tell the file was corrupt. I certainly want to utilize these grenades if possible, so let me go ahead and do that now. Whew! Get out of here. But if anyone is ever wondering why I don't do the first room challenges for the non-Treyarch games, it's literally just because I can't, 
I very much dislike them. Like, I don't mind that first map for World War II, but I can't just do a first room video for a single map. You have to do it for them all. I don't know. I mean, if there's a if there's a demand for me to go back and do it for the non-Treyarch games, then perhaps it's something I could look into. Leave it in the comments. Let me know. Do you think I should do the first room challenge for the non-Treyarch games? I also want to quickly apologize if you can hear some like very sharp clicking in the background. Unfortunately, my keyboard stopped working. I've been in contact with Razor support. They're sending me a new one, but I had to go back and use my old Black Widow keyboard, which has like the really clicky green switches. But unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that because this game just will not work with controller, no matter what I use. PlayStation 5 controller, PlayStation 4 controller, Xbox controller. This game just does not want to work with controller. Even with DS for Windows, I mean, it just does not want to work. So I'm, I'm fine with playing with keyboard and mouse. It's just that, of course, my keyboard would stop working right before I do this game in particular. I feel like we got a pretty good train going on here. I'm gonna try and utilize these grenades again. Whew. Love to see it. I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. I mean, I don't know how high of a we're actually gonna be able to get to, but it certainly is gonna be a decent one, especially for me on World at War. Ah! I say that and then I die immediately. Ooh, is that an insta kill? Hey, I'll take that. I kind of like to save that nuke, honestly. It's not going to be worth it. I wouldn't have been able to make it last long enough into the next round for it to even matter. But World of War Zombies has just this, I don't know if you want to call it charisma or just, I guess, just atmosphere. But it has this thick atmosphere. That's two C's if you're wondering. That just is so cool and awesome, and you don't really see it in zombies anymore. I will say, for Nocturne Toten, I am doing far better than I expected myself to do. In fact, I'm doing far better than I did on stream. Maybe it's a good thing that I do get to record this again, because I have said in past, I don't like re-recording stuff if I mess up. Like, if I go down on round two, I go down on round two. We can clearly see that in my Black Ops 1 first room video. Like this. Like, wha- Ah! That was a bit risky. Woo! Oh dear. That's not good. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh! 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 Wow. Oh. Biggest clutch of my zombie's career and I mess it up. Oh no! Oh! Round seven. I kind of hoped I would get a little bit higher, but you know what? Still higher than I anticipated to get to. Now, Verrucht is where I expect to have problems. Because we spawned in this room. I believe that is actually the room that we want to spawn in. It has a better gun, I'm pretty sure. At least that's what someone said in chat when I did stream live. Because we have, we do have some okay weapons here. The Springfield, not necessarily. Uh, but the M1 Grand is pretty decent. We have grenades, but I don't think grenades are going to be too, too viable. Because Nocturne Toten is far more open than either of these Vruck spawn rooms, and I was still getting hurt by those grenades. Now, to be fair, I was a little bit closer than I kind of hoped I would be when I did throw those grenades. But even still, any grenade in this room is going to hurt. And that's just what it comes down to. Oh, uh, what are you doing, big boy? You love to see it. Now, we do have Quick Revive here. Obviously, it's not usable for two reasons. One, power must be activated first. But the second reason is that in World at War, Quick Revive doesn't actually revive yourself. It is specifically only used in multiplayer, where you can revive another player quickly. But it wasn't until Black Ops 1 when Quick Revive became a soloable perk, where it did become more or less a self-revive. And that is the Quick Revive that we all know and love. In the background, you can hear all the screaming. The atmosphere on this map easily... I think most people can agree in the zombies community. Easily the scariest zombies map there is. And that's just it. I mean, that's really all I need to say there. But I just know that this is about to get wild real quickly, because it always does for Verruckt. I keep calling it Verruckt, which I guess is its proper pronunciation, because I made a TikTok about creepy details about uh, Verruckt, and this little German boy uh, stitched it or however you use the, the TikToks. Ah, and he just goes, it's verrückt, it's verrückt. And ever since then, I've been like, man, people actually like get, I guess Germans specifically get proper upset when you mispronounce words in their language, which I mean, fair enough. Like there is a one way to pronounce it. And clearly I was pronouncing it wrong. But ever since then, almost like a meme, I've been pron <laughs> pronouncing it correctly as verrückt. I'm almost wondering if I should trade out the M1911 for 
the Springfield. I mean, we'll need a max ammo if we want it to be visible. Oh my. Okay, maybe I will hold on to this then. Because the M1911 becomes really decent during insta-kills. Because the Springfield is bolt action, I'm pretty sure. It takes a little while for it to, you know, rechamber. The M1911 is semi-automatic with a much faster fire rate. Nuke. Let's go. Get them out of here. But round five, I am extremely pleased with that because not only are we in Verruckt, but we are in the bad side of Verruckt. At least I think it's the bad side. Either side you're on, you're going to be struggling. I mean, this is easily, I think it actually is widely considered like the or at least one of the most difficult starting rooms, as well as being the scariest, clearly, by all the screams and just the any type of asylum aesthetic is just going to be horrifying. But Treyarch really, really nailed it with this map when it comes to the aesthetic and the atmosphere and everything like that. Here's where it's going to be getting a little bit tough, though, is starting to really get a train going. And I'm just wasting ammo, really. Oh, oh well, moving on to the next map. Shinonuma, for me, is a very lackluster map. And maybe I'll be crucified for saying that. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Shinonuma. I know for high rounders, it's obviously their absolute favorite because the high rounds on this map are just unbelievably easy. You can hit insanely high rounds. I think the world record was just broken for like round 11,000 or something, which is just insane. But if you're not a high round player, this map just isn't that great, to be honest. Unlike most other maps, it doesn't have a loop. It's a center area with four branching areas off of it and a couple of them have some pretty decent training spots or whatever but for the most part navigating this map is just kind of annoying especially with like the swamps and the mud areas where it like really slows you down we of course have our boy peter mccain just hanging around and some people will say that this map has to be held in high regards because it's the introduction of our main cast that we would continue to follow for the next decade. But the truth is, you don't have to like something just because it was the start of something. You know, for me, Nocturne Toten isn't that great of a map either. I mean, it is extremely basic. There is nothing to it. Fun to play, absolutely. And I think even Treyarch can look at Nocturne Toten and admit that it's not one of the greatest because it was the first. They didn't even have the time or the resources to develop a full original map. They had to take it out of the campaign, I'm pretty sure. And that's perfectly fine. And Shinonuma, you know, you can't blame them too, too much. I mean, with this map, they specifically had to have voice actors and lines and writers, and there definitely was a lot that went into this map, no doubt. But you definitely are allowed to say that it's not one of the greatest because Treyarch wasn't necessarily having an identity crisis with this mode. I mean, clearly they had some great story written. It's just, I think people who, hot, who hold this map in such a high regard are more or less blinded by nostalgia. Either way, enough with picking on Shinonuma, let's quickly talk about the aesthetics of this map. The aesthetics I actually really like. A Japanese swamp, I think, is a brilliant idea. And an execution, considering it's the third zombie map ever made, it still isn't even that bad. As a matter of fact, I would say that the Black Ops 1 remake, I mean, the Black Ops 1 remake for all the maps are better, but I would argue that Shinonuma is the best remake of the Black Ops 1 remakes. Remember, the World at War engine Whew, is a bad engine. That's why for Black Ops 1, Treyarch switched over to a new one, something that allowed them to kind of push the limits of, oh, oh, I can't believe that just happened. Round three, are you kidding me? I was talking, Zompa, you can't just be doing that. Well, now we are moving on to what I definitely can consider one of the greatest zombies maps of all time. This map and the technology used for this map, I don't necessarily want to say it was ahead of its time, but it, it definitely stood the test of time because this map is referenced everywhere. Even for people who didn't play much Call of Duty Zombies, you know, multiplayer people, they always reference Doris as being one of the greatest of all time. Kino Der Toten as well, because, you know, it was the launch map of Black Ops 1, and that's where a lot of people were introduced to zombies. But for old school people, Doris is it for them. And that is a statement that I absolutely can get behind. I mean, look at this. Look at the details in the skybox. It just looks great. This is also really where the story kind of took over. They kind of had a better idea of where they wanted to take the mode and how they wanted to proceed. There are tons of radios around the map talking about the base on the moon, how this place was overrun, you know, stuff like that. Stories of how Richtofen went crazy. And speaking of the moon, if we run up here and aim in at that, you can kind of see right there those orange lights. That there 
is Griffin Station, which is the, the map you play on on the map Moon. I know that originally Moon was supposed to be a Paris map, and that was just kind of going to be a small Easter egg to the station on the Moon. And then ultimately Moon ended up being, you know, DLC 4 for Black Ops 1. However, the execution of Moon, tying in the story with Doris and just the way that they were able to do it back then, incredible. Something that probably the Call of Duty community or any gaming community from any game would probably never see again. This era of zombies all the way up to Black Ops 3 zombies was absolute peak. They tried to replicate that with Black Ops 4 zombies, which is, you know, pretty evident. But it ended up being, you know, not quite what we wanted or expected and that absolutely is bound to happen i mean you can't have a 100 percent success every single time we were in an era of world at war to block ops one to Black Ops 2, to Black Ops 3, just the absolute most hype time for the gaming industry in general. I mean, games at that time were better than they had ever been. And in these days, we definitely have engines that can provide us with more supreme and superior graphics. I mean, even the EA games that are just copy and paste are looking pretty decent. It just sucks that we live in an era where most of these games are just copy paste. I mean, Call of Duty has been that way for a while, but each game had their own identity no matter how copy paste it was and then eventually when Activision became a lot more money hungry you start to see the games mold into one you start to see that there really just are the same game over and over and over and over and that's about to be even worse now that Activision has said that the Modern Warfare 2 engine is going to be the engine used for all Call of Duties coming out forever or at least for the future. So the next Treyarch title is going to be on the Modern Warfare 2 engine. If Sledgehammer has another game coming out, their game will be on the MW2 engine. And so it's going to be a lot easier for them to copy paste, to become a bit more lazy with their titles. I do hope that if Microsoft is truly backing them and going through with that deal, there's going to be a bit more identity to each of the games, but there still really is no telling. For other games, specifically from EA, all their sports games, they're clearly all copy paste. It is very rare that you have a game that truly stands the test of time, has its own identity. Work has gone into it to allow it to have its own identity. Like say what you want about The Last of Us Part 2, but that game had an identity. It had people behind it, designing it, working on it, that knew what they were doing, were passionate about what they were doing. Oh, oh my goodness, that was, how was Nocturne on Toten our highest round? How did that just happen? Well, thank you for joining me for this very short video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. If you did, drop a like. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. And if you're looking for something else to watch, maybe click this video. I think you'll like it a whole lot. And with that being said, take care.